Yeah, this cook is a seven and a half pound Boston butt. Uh, it's going to it's a pork roast. I'm not, uh, I'm not making pulled pork. So I'm going to want to cook this at a higher temperature. My temperature range is going to be uh, minimum 275, as close to 275 as possible with a maximum of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to need that out for, I'm thinking six, maybe seven hours. It's been a while since I've done one of these things. So my setup is over in this side of the kettle. I have, I just dumped them in. I didn't count them out. I'm thinking that's maybe about 140 unlit coal. And sitting in the chimney, that's 20 coal that I'm going to fire up. Then I'll place them over here on this side. And what that'll do is that'll slowly burn its way around the kettle throughout the cook. And the reason I have it set up that way is if I do have to add uh, more fuel to the cook, towards the end of the cook, then I can just place, place some more unlit coal up against the hot coal and burn its way back around this way again. So the temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And charcoal I'm using is Stubbs All Natural uh, briquettes. So let me get her fired up and we'll get the cook underway. Okay, the hot coals have been added. Now what I'm going to do is set a drip pan down in here with about a quarter of hot water for moisture and catch the pan dripping or catch the drippings from the, the roast. Uh, now I throw the grate on and the lid, set both vents, top and bottom both to half open, give it 20 minutes uh, and check on the temp and then fine tune the temp. And here's the pork roast. This is a Boston butt, but you can also use a fresh picta cam. Uh, what I did to prep this was I took a good handful of light brown sugar, placed it in a bowl, and added about a tablespoon of coarse salt, uh, garlic powder and onion powder, and maybe half a tablespoon of uh, black peppercorn. Then I just rubbed it down well, top, bottom, and sides. Now, this doesn't have much of a fat cap on it. Uh, what I did, though, is I made some slices down through the the fat cap and when I rubbed it down I rubbed that rub down in between the, the fat saw and get that down into the meat. Now this thing is sitting at room temperature well now it's sitting outside now but I did this about an hour hour and a half ago because I want this roast uh, at room temperature when it goes on the kettle. Okay we just passed the 21 minute mark we're sitting at 225 which is uh, plenty good for me because once I take this lid off and clean the grates and get the meat on, uh, the air's gonna perk up them coal in there and that'll probably knock this thing up to around 275 where I want it to be. Okay, the roast is on. Added a couple chunks of apple wood. Now if you're using this method, remember, uh, the grate would normally be sitting like this with the flip grate straight across from the meat. Remember to keep it cocked a little bit. You notice how now it opened up that flip grate. I have access to the hot coal place the, the wood chunks on it. So remember to keep that in mind. That way, and as it burns across, if I want to add some more wood, I'll be able to put some more over here. So if you had it right that smack in the center, you won't be able to access that hot coal down there. This is something to keep in mind. Make it a little bit easier. Okay, the lid's on. Uh, I did not touch the vents. They're still, both still sitting at half. So I'll let this sit now for 20, 30 minutes and then check and see what this kettle stabilized at. Check-in time. We're sitting at the 32-minute mark since the lid went on. We're sitting at uh, about 2.35, so we're a little low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock that top fan open a quarter, so that'll be open th three quarters. Then I'll check back in about 15, 20 minutes and see what the temp is. It's been 20 minutes since I made that last adjustment. I'm sitting at 2.50, so we climbed up a little bit. But I can see there's smoke starting to come uh, come out of the vents. That means the coals are starting to perk up in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it another 15 or 20 minutes and then check. I don't want this thing to get too hot. It's easier to climb the temp and keep it down than it is to drop it. Uh, especially when you have a lot of uh, coal in the kettle as a fuel supply. The more coal in there, then the more there is to, to get hot and uh, to climb your temp. Hey, it's been about uh, 20 minutes. And I have my 275, and we're an hour and 20 into the cook. That uh, suits me just fine. This is going to be a long cook. So what I do now is just monitor the temp and let her cook. 
Okay, we're at the two hour and three minute mark since the post went on. Attempt sitting, I've climbed to about 290. Uh, what I want to do is take a peek at this thing. Yeah, there she's looking good. Okay, a peek at the charcoal. It's looking good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, throw another chunk of wood on. And I'm going to mop this thing. I'm just going to mop it with water. I don't have any apple juice. Forgot to pick that up at the store. So I'm going to mop this thing with some water. Throw the lid on, and I'm just going to bump the top closed uh, a little bit. Just trying to get that temperature to drop back down closer to 275. Okay, we're past the three hour mark a little bit, 305 since the roast went on. I forgot to show you the temp on the lid before I took the lid off. That was down to about 250. So when I made that uh, adjust adjustment last time, I closed that top vent by a quarter. So it was sitting at, uh, at about half, and that was enough to drop this thing uh, 25 plus degrees. That goes to show you that uh, how much adjustment you can get out of just a top vent on this. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to give this thing a, a 180 turn so it cooks uh, evenly. Take a peek at the charcoal. That's holding up pretty well. Okay, I'm going to throw the lid on and I'm going to open up that top vent to three quarter again. Try and get this back up to about 275, 285, something like that. Okay, we're at the, the five hour mark since the roast has been on. This will be the last clip I'll be able to take while I have daylight, sun setting. Uh, temperature sitting at 300 degrees, and I didn't want to mess with it anymore. I just left it there uh, within my my range. I was a little low at the beginning. It's probably uh, evened out to about 285, so I'm happy with that. It's your average temperature is really is what's important. So I'm going to do is see how close or far away we are from being done. So let me take a temp on this. bone, there's the bone, there we go, looks like we're at 183, okay, well that suits, take a look, Peek at the charcoal. She's starting to dwindle down, but I believe I have plenty left. So I'm going to give this another, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and uh, check it. And it should be done. And then we'll go from there. And here's the final product. I checked the temp. Right at the six hour mark, it was uh, 193 to 195 internal temp, depending where I checked it. Uh, the grill was sitting about 285, so I dropped a little bit. I pulled her off, bought her in, let it sit for 45 minutes. I pulled the bone out, bone pulled right out, and then I uh, I just sliced her up. So this is the difference between pulled pork and a pork roast. With a pork roast, you can you can slice it. And I don't know how much how well uh, you can see the moisture in this, but this is good and moist. It's good and moist. It's not what I'd call uh, pullable. You won't be able to pull this, but this is not what you want with a pork roast. So that's uh, the yield in meat that you would get out of a a seven and a half pound roast. Uh, total cook time then was six hours. Okay, I wanted to mention that uh, I rubbed this down with brown sugar, which I normally don't do. Normally I just put uh, salt and pepper or rub it with salt and pepper. And that's, that's what I should have done for this roast because it's, uh, it's her, a New Year's uh, pork and sauerkraut dinner. But what that brown sugar did is it gave it a really nice sweet taste uh, on the outside. So the bark, which it really doesn't, it's dark, but it's not a real, it's not a crispy hard bark. Kind of kept a little soft, but it's got a really nice sweet flavor to it. Now, I'm really happy with the way this come out. Uh, it tastes great, but 
if you're doing pork and sauerkraut and you don't want sweet, you don't want to rub this thing down with brown sugar, just uh, salt and pepper is all you need and garlic or and some other seasonings. But I would omit the, uh, the brown sugar for New Year's next time. Don't know how well that's going to mix with the sauerkraut. Now, if you wonder what the difference is between pulled pork and a pork roast, pulled pork is normally cooked at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. Pulled pork is normally cooked about 225, maybe 250 for a longer period of time, and what that does is it makes uh, the meat more tender, and it also gives it a little bit, uh, the texture is a little bit different in the meat. And that's normally cooked around 200 degrees. Uh, pork roast is cooked at a higher temp, 275, no more than 300 and that's usually cooked to 190 degrees. Now 190 degrees that's uh, still hot enough internal temperature to break down the, the uh, connective tissue and everything in it and make the meat tender but it's just not as tender or pullable as pulled pork. It still has a nice flavor, uh, the texture is a little bit different and it kind of gives just a little bit of a different taste.